for our aphrodisiac appetizer, we are serving oysters. Actually, the Spanish name is Ostras Escabechadas. Oysters Escabeche. And basically, these are oysters that you don't have to shuck yourself, although you can if you're ambitious. Um, not wanting to ruin my nails. I don't do that. So I bought the oysters that I can get from my fish purveyor that come in a little glass jar and you can use those. You can just take a look at the date, see they're very fresh. They usually come in every day or two. And so what I've done is I've taken those oysters and I have poached them in olive oil. The olive oil is um, just heated till it's sort of lukewarm almost. They say tepid in the recipe. And you put the oysters in and they just just, they cook at a very low temperature and they just start to firm up just slightly. You do that for only two minutes. And I found that it was a good thing to do to just turn them over when, after one minute, one minute on one side and one minute on the other. Then you remove them from the olive oil and set them aside. And you add to the olive oil um, dry white wine. Sancerre is nice because Sancerre goes very, very well with oysters and also if you combine them in this kind of a recipe, it's a very good thing. The, the flavors work very well together. And you add three uh, tablespoons of sherry vinegar, six peppercorns, uh, three bay leaves, and I added a little bit of an extra to the recipe of my own. We have something locally called a Meyer lemon here in California. I don't know how widespread this is, but they're really highly regarded here. They're unusual lemons. They have a very sort of very waxy um, skin. It's very smooth in comparison to another uh, type of lemon, and they're very a eureka lemon, which are most of the lemons that we eat for eureka lemons. This lemon is very smooth skinned, and it's very soft to the touch. It's usually very, very juicy, and the juice is slightly soil after the oysters have been taken out. You cook down that mixture uh, just until you get rid of that sort of slightly acidic taste that you get from vinegar. So it loses that sort of vinegary taste. So I've taken a microplane and I grated about a teaspoon of the rind. And I recommend these things highly. This is uh, one of my microplanes. I have many. They're great for grating cheese as well. And you can get them with all kinds of different openings. I even have one for nutmeg, which is fabulous. They just save your bacon. They are so easy to use. They do a very, very fine um, grating with very little effort. So I put that together. Then you, act, you let the cool, the mixture cool down. You let the mixture of the wine and the olive oil and all of the other additives cool down. And after it's cool, you add it to the oysters and you refrigerate it for two days, which we've done. So we're at that stage now where these have been refrigerated and they've been marinating for two days. Then what I've chosen to serve them on are things that I happen to have on a jewelry designer. So I go to all kinds of shows where you can get unusual things. And I found these wonderful mussel shells. Mussels are where freshwater pearls come from. They're cultured in the mussel. Sometimes, instead of just floating in the mantle of the mussel, they form pearls that are attached to the nacre inside the shell. And this is what you get. And they make beautiful little containers. And these ones have been polished on both sides. They're wonderful for serving seafood. And so I've chosen to use these to put the oysters. And I'm going to do that right now. And I'm going to do that right now. I'm put, putting this, this is another one, I'm putting this on a bed of dulse just to keep it from flipping around, sort of make it stable. But it's also of the sea. And this is our Canadian content since Kabita has done her Bengali content, I'm doing my Canadian content, which is dulse. Dulse is a seaweed that's very commonly eaten in Canada, especially in the eastern seaboard. They don't know so much about it in the middle of the country, but both coasts know about this stuff. This particular uh, dulse is from New Brunswick. You find it as a sort of bar snack in pub. Uh, dulse is from New Brunswick. You find it as a sort of bar snack in pubs. Along with your beer, you'll be sitting there helping yourself to a little dulse. It's sort of very kind of crispy, dark reddish material, and it has a wonderful addictive salty taste. You can put it in salads, you can put it in all kinds of things, and you can just 
eat it. You can go into a pub in um, New, uh, New Brunswick or Nova Scotia, and very often they'll have a barrel of it. You just go buy and you help yourself to a fistful of dulce and get your beer and you're good to go. Um, it's a great salty snack and it's very, very healthy for you. There's all kinds of minerals in it. So I've chosen to use the dulce as the base for this. And I'm going to just simply take some oysters, place them on the mussel, add a little of the marinade, and there you have a lovely appetizer, which I hope. These mussels are not the kind of mussels that you find at your supermarket. These are particular mussels, they're very large, and they are strictly to grow pearls. There's a huge production, especially in China, they're very, very good at it, and they produce absolutely phenomenal pearls. And you can, as you can see, there are several pearls attached to this shell. Some of these will have hundreds of pearls in them and there are larger ones than this. This isn't the largest mussel shell that I've seen. But they're really beautiful just as a sort of decorative object and to use as containers for food if you can find them.